Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss phasor diagram, phasor diagram of three-phase induction motor at no load condition at slip speed. So here we already discussed the phasor diagram of three-phase induction motor at at standstill condition. At standstill condition means we know that standstill meaning itself standstill means the speed will be the zero but what about at slip speed at slip speed a speed will be the the speed will become nr equal to slip times of speed it rotates with the slip times of speed at this condition what are the changes will be occur for the phasor diagram of the three phase induction motor so for any phasor diagram we should follow the only equivalent circuit you know that the equivalent circuit is a simple way that is a simple we have a stator simply we have a stator we are giving the supply stator has some resistance r1 and we have the rotor x1 and it will be given to the winding that is the stator winding and it will be supply the power from stator winding to rotor winding and from that we have rotor resistance that is R2 and the rotor reactance X2. So this is the circuit of the three phase induction motor. So by using this we will draw the phasor diagram. So this is the V1 supply and this is the e EMF generated in the primary winding, EMF generated in the secondary winding. So by using this circuit diagram we will draw the phasor diagram. Here. The first thing is you have to draw the induced EMF in the induced EMF in the primary winding. So generally the induced EMF in the primary winding is minus E1. This is the minus E1. But we should in order to draw the same magnitude reverse as plus E1. So we will draw the same magnitude that is the plus E1 and E1, E2 both are in the same phase but E2 has less magnitude. So better to take this is the E2 and always in phasor diagrams for generated EMF flux having 90 degrees phase. So the 90 degrees phase is like this. 90 degrees phase is this is called flux and in the flux direction always we have magnetizing current that that is the I mu and for even the core loss component IC will be generated so the combination of core loss component and as well as I, I mu we will get the I naught we will get the I naught and here the E2 will be generated and it will be supply the phi 2 will be lagging current so the current generated in the circuit we can take it as the i2 take it as the i2 and the phase difference between the e2 and phi 2 is for rotor we can take it as phi 2 the exact i2 will be generated in this winding is you can take the I2 dash I2 dash now the combination of now the combination of I2 dash and I naught so parallel to I naught and next is parallel to this the combination of these two things we will get the I1 we will get the I1 so this is the complete current generated from the this is the complete current generated from the state R circuit. So here and what is the remaining thing? We have some drop, drop across resistance, drop across reactance. Here drop across resistance will be, so we need to find out I1 R1. I1 R1 means this is, this is parallel to the I1. So we have this is the I1 and R1 and remaining is I1 X1. I1 X1 is always 
i1 x1 is always so better to take 90 degrees with the i1 r1 just take it as 90 degrees so this is the i1 x1 so therefore the combination of these two things that means e1 drop and drop across the resistance and drop across the reactance it will give the supply voltage just combine it just combine it we will get this is the supply voltage supply voltage is the v1 supply voltage is the v1 okay so this is about the complete phasor diagram of three phase induction motor at slip speed at slip speed this is the slip speed that that's why it has e2 equal to s times of e2 naught s times of e2 naught what is the meaning of e2 naught the generated emf the generated emf at uh, at standstill condition e2 naught means already we write here you know that already the emf in rotor emf in rotor at standstill at standstill condition so what is e2 e2 is name itself it is a s into e2 naught that means emf in the rotor at running condition at running condition okay so these are the this is the phasor diagram this is the phasor diagram of the three phase induction motor at slip speed at the slip speed okay next and we will give some power factors this is phi 2 phi 2 is the rotor power factor here we have the rotor power factor and where is the state of power factor this is the v1 supply voltage i1 generated so this is we can take it as phi 1 phi 1 is the state r power factor this is the state r power factor you can take phi 2 or theta 2 or r or phi 1 r the theta 1 phi 1 r the theta 1 so both are the same power factors both are the same power factors okay so next <coughs> here we will discuss some points regarding the power factor the input power factor during no load condition is very poor so input power factor means you can take cos phi 1 input power factor means look at here input voltage is v1 input current is i1 the, this is between v1 as well as i1 cosine angle and what about rotor power sorry this is the stator power factor phi 1 actually so we can take it as the cos phi 1 this is between the v1 and the i1 rotor power factor is we can name it as cos phi 2 this is between the v2 and the i2 v2 and the i2 here the input power factor during no load condition is very poor this cos phi 1 is the uh, input supply input current input supply as well as the input current that is the i1 v1 and the i1 but at no load this this power factor at no load is less but when the motor is loaded the input power factor is increases for example the same power factor cos phi 1 is loaded is at the loaded condition that means it is between the v1 and the i1 the power factor will be the power factor will be here the, this is the low at the no load condition power factor will be high this power factor will be high that means during no load condition is during no load condition is name itself is very poor but and loaded the input power factor increases power factor increases second condition the rotor power factor this is for cos phi 2 the rotor power factor is cos phi 2 
it is between the generator emf e2 and generator current i2 yes better it will be better when low so when it is at the no load condition it is at the no load condition same power factor cos phi 2 at load condition here the cos phi 2 also between the rotor induced emf and the rotor current will be better so it is decreases slightly but it is the better it is the good one and it is the low one next what about the induction motor power factor always induction motor power factor is lagging always it is in the lagging mode for synchronous machine it depends on the nature of excitation so when we are discussing the synchronous motor means nature of the excitation synchronous machine itself it has two supplies one supply is for the stator another supply is for rotor rotor supply especially for the flux next what about transformer power factor it depends on the load and nature of the load it depends on the nature of the load from the all these points but the power factor of induction motor always lagging always lagging it always required the flux okay so this is about the phase error diagram of three phase induction motor at slip speed i hope all of you understand the session thank you